ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome from me to you. Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells Europe at Hanover Fairground in 2023. This is the Technical Forum. My name is Mona Lee. I'll be moderating here all the interesting talks regarding our future. Please come and have a seat. There are two lovely ladies walking around and serving you complimentary drinks. So yes, there's something for free at this fair. <laughs> Not only free knowledge, but also free drinks. So come and have a seat. We'll discuss one of my favorite topics, which is green hydrogen. And I really like the title of this presentation because I feel this title is kind of summarizing what is, ha what is the hot topic this year. It's not green hydrogen itself, but how to make um, hydrogen, green hydrogen competitive. For that, we will have the R&D engineer from green hydrogen, from the INGI team, power technology, Mr. Iker Peña. Warm welcome. Okay, so my name is Iker Peña, and as the moderator was saying, I am an R&D engineer in Injetim company, and okay, specifically I work for the green, green Hydrogen Generation business unit. So what is Injetim Group? Injetim is a company that mainly manufactures power electronics, and we are present in several sectors, for example, PIM inverters, wind industry, Hydropower generation, we have electrical storage, we have also vehicle charger, we have trains and railway, ships and propulsion, and also not only that, but okay, we have operation and maintenance services also. Okay, so in a sentence, whenever I ask, I am asked, what do we do as a company? I say, we are a power conversion technological company. And we do this, uh, all these things under the umbrella of this idea that we believe that there is a different way to generate, transport, store, and consume energy in a more efficient and sustainable way. OK, so in Team, in a brief word, we are present in more than 23 countries all around the world. So we consider ourselves as a multinational. We are more than 5,000 people. We have a, we, what we consider a high percentage of turnover dedicated to research and development every year. And we have more than 80 years of presence in the electric sector. So we have subsidiaries and factories all around the world. We have several factories. And not um, as I was saying, our headquarters are in Spain, but our factories are not only settled in Spain. We have also factories in Brazil, in India, and in the USA. Regarding the operation and maintenance services, we have presence in all, the, all, uh, all around the world. And regarding green hydrogen, what do we do as Injetim for green hydrogen generation? So we have a dedicated business unit for green hydrogen generation. We are specialized on this. And our story history in hydrogen generation started, started in 2006 when we started developing an electrolyzer, an alkaline electrolyzer from scratch. And well, from several years, we were, on, we were in this market. And some of the alkaline stacks are still in operation. So we can see that we have a vast knowledge in the electrolysis, let's say, technology. And since 2020, we focused the business unit only in the power supplies. As we are power converter manufacturers, we said, OK, let's focus on what we can do best. So we are focusing the power supplies for the electrolyzers. We do rectifiers, we do DC-DC converters, converters, we do medium voltage solutions. And currently, we have more than 10 megawatts of installed power in hydrogen generation and more than 20 megawatts in our green hydrogen generation pipeline from the next year to years. So what everyone wants, how can we make green hydrogen more competitive from the point of view of the power supply? So let's start saying that power supply cost is becoming more and more relevant. Why? Because the electrolyzer's cost is lowering because of the automation of the plants, bigger gigafactories of electrolyzer production. But the power supply price or, or cost is keeping more or less constant. It is true that the rectifiers are almost constant, but the transformer prices are rising. So from a next scenario where the overall cost of the power supply in red compared to the electrolyzer cost was this, we are moving to this. So the power supply is becoming a bigger player in the game when it comes to the capex of the green hydrogen generation plants. So 
what are the typical market trends in hydrogen generation when, when it comes to lower the LCOH? One typical plan, um, plan is to connect directly the electrolyzer to the solar PV field generation, a DC-DC connection. Why? Because with this, you can save the intermediate AC grid generation equipment, so it is a cheaper solution, but it has new, new challenges to face, such as choosing the optimal converter, the architecture, defining the, let's say, the behavior between the electrolyzer and the, um, and the solar PV farm. There is a trade-off there. And also, there are some questions, that, for example, such as when there is no energy, how can we feed the balance of plant of the electrolyzer? How can we feed the auxiliaries of the plant? Do we need extra energy storage? There are some questions that must be studied. And the other and the, um, the most hyped one is the scaling up the power in the green, uh, green hydrogen generation. Everyone has heard about the plants up to gigawatt size that has been announced so as to make use of the scale economy. And this also implies some new challenges, specifically regarding the current density, the power factor, and the grid compliance when we are connected to the grid. The bigger the installed plant of the, pl of the green, green hydrogen generation plant it is, the more restrictive the re these requirements are, specifically unitary power factors, harmonic limitations, THD limitations, and also, as we grow in power, we all want to centralize equipment. And when it comes to the, to the transformers, the higher power and the current it is, the more complicated uh, the standardization becomes. So, how can we align as a team, as a power converter manufacturer, our product, road, product roadmap to these trends? So, for the first trend, solar PV to, to hydrogen generation. We have developed a DC-DC converter specifically for this kind of applications. We have studied the balance of plant consumption. We have identified the critical parts. Same with the plant auxiliary consumption. And also we have made a study of the renewable resource avail availability and its compliance with the green hydrogen generation, with electrolyzers working time. And for this, not only designing and developing our uh, power converter solution, we have designed a software, an intelligent optimization software, for making this trade-off between the solar PV array, the electrolyzer, and the converter. So we can design our optimum converter, considering the electrolyzer, what the electrolyzer needs, our, let's say, preferred hydrogen production, and also the, um, the commercial PV array that we have considered. And then, for the scaling up in power, which one is the optimal rectifier technology? Because we all know that there are thyristors, there are diodes plus DCDC, there are IABT rectifiers. So which one is the best technology when it comes to this type of plants? As I was saying, the, more in the bigger the installed power of the plant it is, the more restrictive the, the, um, the grid code becomes. Unitary power factor, so no reactive power can be generated. Grid code compliance must be assured. Individual harmonics, so could be that we can may we can may need uh, harmonic filters. We need to limit the THD in current in voltage. So there are several standards. Those are the most common ones that must be assured. So which one is the best rectifier technology? Are IGBT based rectifiers, are thyristor rectifiers, or are DC DC plus diode rectifiers the best solution for this? We have made a comparison, and for us it is clear that. The bigger the plant it is, the more justified the IGBT converters are. Why? Because if we need to assure harmonic compliance with tire resistors or with diodes, we need to install harmonic filters. These harmonic filters imply a bigger reactive power amount in the grid. So we need extra compensation of reactive power. We need statcoms or capacitor banks. So once you start to consider this trade-off, with IGBT rectifiers, you do not inject reactive power to the grid you do not lower the power factor. You can only improve it. So for us, it is clearly justified that for bigger plants, IGBTs are the way to go. So for this, we have developed a new rectifier optimis optimized purely for the hydrogen generation, and we have called it the ELIZER, this one. We started with the air-cooled solution, but fastly we moved to the water-cooled solution. Why? Because we can take the heat outside. We also reduce the noise of the fans, obviously and also we have reduced the space. So as general claims, let's say that it's a modular and a scalable bu building block. 
as we do not need extra harmonic filters or extra reactive power uh, compensators, we only need these blocks per electrolyzer. So let's say that it's modular. We can parallel them, parallelize them, so that's a point. Also, all protections are integrated inside the rectifier. AC breakers, switches, everything. We also have an electrolyzer pre-charge and discharge system so as to protect and to charge the electrolyzer. We have all certifications available for a rectifier or for a com power converter because we also can work bidirectionally. And we can go with each rectifier up to 8,000 amperes in DC and up to 1,500 volts. Okay? So let's say also that as we are based on a PV inverter, we also make use of the scale economy. And it's a proven technology because the power stack is, let's say, highly proven for us as, as in the team. And I will also highlight that for this converter, we have worked closely with several electrolyzer manufacturers. Then, as an IGBT rectifier, it's also intelligent. We can react, we can compensate the, the reactive power. As the power flow is bidirectional, the remaining power that is not used as an active power can be used as reactive power to, let's say, increase the power factor of the grid. It's not only that the IGBT rectifiers do not move the power factor, do not lower the power factor. The thing is that if we have remaining power, we can improve the power factor of the grid, compensating the existing reactive power. So for this, there are different strategies. You can prioritize active or reactive power. Also, we can work as an active filter. What does this mean? That existing harmonics in the grid, specific harmonics in the grid, can be compensated with the power converter. We can inject harmonics specifically for compensating the existing ones. We are also prepared to work in events such as uh, microgrid cuts. We can work in low voltage right through operation. And one of our best points or claims is that we can optimize the electrolyzer's lifetime by reading the electrolyzer's parameters and optimizing the, the rectifier's behavior for it, for the hydrogen production and for the electrolyzer's lifetime. We can optimize it. Then these rectifiers, we integrate them in power stations. And what are the power stations? For us, the power station concept is a 40 feet skid where we integrate all the needed components from the medium voltage AC grid to the needed uh, DC low voltage for the electrolyzer. So this is a plug and play solution, a turnkey solution, where we integrate the power transformer, the rectifiers, the skid, auxiliary services, the switch here, everything. So from on the one side, we have the medium voltage connection, and on the other side, the low voltage DC connection to the electrolyzer. What are the benefits of this? That we have four independent rectifiers, four independent lines per power station that we can use for connect for feeding for independent electrolyzers, two, one in parallel, as we prefer. We can reach up to 16 kiloamperes in DC. That means 17 MBAs. Depending on the voltage of the electrolyzer, we can reach up to 17 MBAs. It are they are still modular and scalable. We can treat them as building blocks. And the, another good point of the integration on the 40 feet skid is that we integrate them on our factory and we test them fully in our factory. So they are transported to client, fully tested. Also, I would like to highlight that this is the highest current density IGBT rectifier in the market. Thank you. That was lovely having you here. And I can take a question from the audience at this time. Wow, this technical form is packed at this <laughs> time. So let's browse. Who has a question at this time? Yeah, I had this before. <laughs> Today is a really um, shy people day. Don't worry. Uh, you can take the questions to your booth. It was lovely having you here. Thank you so much, Mr. Ikapinia. You're welcome. Thank you, Noel.